Uh, I'm Dr. Vidya Jahagidhar. I'm a consultant endocrinologist at Kove Medical Center Hospital in Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. And we have with us uh, Dr. Sanjay Khaldra. I would like him to have a few words with us um, discussing his experience and, uh, in, a, in the field of diabetes and endocrinology. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Dr. Khaldra. Could you please tell me about your um, experience in endocrinology, where you trained and where you are at this moment? Because you are quite a, a senior endocrinologist in the country. Um, I'm one of the new uh, you know, budding endocrinologists, so I would like to know more about you. I still feel young at heart and I think my hormones are quite young. Though I am 21 years old now in endocrinology, uh, I did my DM from the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi and I completed it in 1999. I went straight into practice in Karnal in Haryana. It was and is still is a small town and I've been there ever since. Uh, I love my subject, I love my work. If God were to give me another seven lives, I would choose endocrinology in all those lives. Okay. It's a great privilege to uh, have this discussion with you. So, uh, endocrinology has evolved over the the period of last 20 years. What do you think is very different from then and now? Things have changed. First of all, the morbidity has increased many fold. Uh, we have many, many more patients of every subject, not only diabetes, not only thyroid, but all the other endocrine uh, diseases. We also have much better screening and diagnostic tools now. So we're able to do a better job than before. And even though we still struggle with maybe insulin acceptance or with early uh, acceptance of early diagnosis of growth hormone uh, failure or, or whatever, whatever endocrine disease it is, I think we are doing a much better job than before. The community is more responsive. Uh, our colleagues in other medical and surgical fields are more responsive. It's much easier to practice quality endocrinology now than it was 20 years ago. Uh, diabetes is you know quite prevalent and is the most common endocrine condition in India and I think India is one of the leading mm -hmm. uh, contributors of diabetics in the yeah. world um, but I feel there's not enough trained endocrinologists um, who can who have the expertise in managing these patients and why do you think there's a shortage of endocrinologists uh, in India uh, you are right, we have about 800 plus endocrinologists trying to tackle about 80 million people with diabetes. So, so that ratio is abysmal. Actually what happened, earlier there were just one or two institutes which offered the DM program and it was the professors of those institutes who were allowed to approve other institutes. So there was this bottleneck which was there about 20 years ago. But now we have institutes all over the country. Odisha itself has two uh, medical colleges where the degrees are recognized in endocrinology. And now we produce upwards of 65 to 70 endocrinologists every year, DM and DNB. We are also complemented by our colleagues who have trained in the US or Australia or UK. And, and again, we are in a, it's not a rosy picture, I would not say that, but again, we are much better off than we were earlier. I remember when I passed out from All India Institute, uh, I said I would go back to Karnal, uh, the population that time was two and a quarter lakhs and in the whole country I could find only one more person. His name is Dr. Milind Patwardhan and he practices in Miraj. I could find only one person who was working in a city where the population was two lakhs. Even in a city like Chandigarh at that time, there was nobody in private practice. Now there are so many boys and girls in so many towns and cities across the country, the population is one lakh, one and a half lakhs, two lakhs, and they're doing very good endocrine service there. So things are much better than before, and I'm happy that, it's, that endocrinology is growing in this manner. Okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, I know there's going to be um, a debate, a panchayat, uh, shortly on classification of diabetes. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, what is the need for this debate at the moment, what is a new in diabetes classification that we are holding this debate at the moment? So when I was a student in medicine, uh, for me all diabetes was either type 1 or type 2 and since I was the best physician in the whole world, obviously I could classify everybody with diabetes. It's only when I became an endocrinologist that I realized it's not so simple. 
and now maybe 20-30% of my OPD might be classified as indeterminate diabetes. And I think the more experienced you are, the, the greater the prevalence of indeterminate diabetes is in your clinic. So if it were a simple issue, classification of diabetes, then we would have a talk on it by an expert. If there were only two answers, black or white, then we might have a debate, maybe a tribate if there were three answers. But here there are so many unanswered questions and so many questionable answers that we need a panchayat. And the format for this is that we have a sarpanch, that is Professor Ish Bhatia from Lucknow. And we have a group of panches or experts, again from all countries of the world. And we'll be talking about issues in classification, issues in clinical presentation, etiopathogenesis and management, relevant to their countries and to ours. Uh, at the end of the panchayat, we may not have a single answer, but certainly our sarpanch, Dr. Bhatia, will be able to provide the direction in which we should proceed. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, I know you're young at heart and uh, wise in terms of experience in uh, endocrinology. Um, what would you um, tell to younger endocrinologists like us? Um, you know, any kind of, you know, a direction towards, you know, to get up to your stage at some point in our life. What would you like to tell us? We should be humble and we should actually be patient-centered. So what does patient-centered mean? It just means keeping the patient's well-being at the center of everything that you do. Patient-centered care does not mean abdicating all responsibility to the patient. So if you have a patient with impending gangrene with a glucose of 500 and he or she says, I will not take insulin, it is not patient-centered care to send the patient away on OADs or on nothing at all. The correct term is responsible patient-centered care. Actually, when we say PCC, we are not abdicating responsibility. We are increasing our responsibility because earlier our responsibility might have been, I have advised insulin, the patient has not taken it, let the patient go to hell. But now in PCC, our responsibility is not only to prescribe the correct regimen and preparation and the correct dosage and the technique, but also to motivate the patient to adhere to what we have said. To make the patient accepting of what we have said, the patient has to come up to our standard of education and information. This is called information equipoise. So as endocrinologists of the country, not only for juniors, not only for seniors, for all of us, we actually have to do endocrine advocacy and we have to make sure that our country is endocrinologically informed. If our country understands what we understand about our subject, then they will accept what we have to offer. So in a, in a nutshell, for juniors it would be just stay faithful to your patient, stay faithful to your discipline and every other reward will follow. Sometimes for our juniors I see there is a mismatch between uh, Lakshmi and Saraswati. So the thing is, when you were doing MBBS, when you were doing MD, when you were doing DM, you worshipped Saraswati. And, and the goddess took good care of you, she took good care of all of us. The moment we uh, complete our exams and we go into practice, suddenly we change our god and we decide that we have to worship only Lakshmi. That's where we get into trouble. You can easily do both. All of us do both. It's just about finding a balance and it's about respecting Saraswati who has brought us up till this stage. If we internalize this, it, it, it's not about religion, it's about philosophy. If we internalize this, life is good for all of us. Thank you, Doctor. That was a, a really a brilliant uh, philosophy. I think every, if every doctor adheres to that, I think the healthcare system would be much better in India. Uh, I, I fully agree. And, and many, another issue is we complain about patients not listening to us. We complain about our fellow medical and surgical colleagues not listening to us. Let's just spare a minute to listen to them. Let's listen to what they have to say, their problems, their challenges, their obstacles. If we listen properly, we will be able to speak properly. We call this concept endocrine therapy by the ear. And we've spoken about this at various platforms, but not at ESI. So, uh, so let's take the opportunity to do this. Therapy by the ear means, first of all, listening to your patient. The same way a cardiologist would listen with a stetho or look with an eco machine. 
once you've listened then you can speak properly you can speak correctly in the correct manner and a third pillar of endocrine therapy by the ear is filtering your patients from the unwanted noises that come from outside from endocrine hearsay and as endocrinologists we have to practice all these three if we do this honestly then again rewards will follow thank you very much doctor thank you for your valuable time thank you how has your experience been in endocrinology in india i know that you trained in the uk and you've been back with us for a year now what's the most difficult thing about practicing endocrinology in the indian perspective um there are quite a lot of challenges that i'm facing but i think <laughs> the most the I'm toughest handling, one I, I think i'm handling it well um the most important thing is patient complaints um or concordance as we may mm -hmm. um uh, call it otherwise and i i am on board with the patient and i um try my best to think from a patient's perspective of why they may not be adhering to a, yeah. a diet or a medication or a lifestyle change uh, um, and there is to some extent I can understand you know their busy lifestyle and so forth mm. but I I just cannot understand why some people just ignore their health and you know all the symptoms or, or complications and then come at a final stage where I feel kind of sorry for them that they mm. they didn't have the insight that they need to get yeah. help at an earlier stage so there's a little bit of frustration, frustration on my side yeah. and that seems to be the biggest challenge i always tell them when a patient comes with end stage renal failure where were you all these days all these we could days. have done I something agree. for you i i share that same frustration and for all of us who are frustrated sometimes with our patients who are sorry for them who get angry at them we have the answer for you in Essicon Bhuvneshwar and we have a wonderful symposium this evening. Uh, it's chaired by Dr. Gagan Priya from Chandigarh. She'll be taking her theme, theme, her team through social endocrinology. They'll talk about how to motivate patients to accept therapy. They'll do it through role play, the Bollywood movie style. They'll also talk about the endocrinology of compassion fatigue which is actually what you complained of. Sometimes you, don't, you do get physically fatigued after a busy OPD, but you also get compassion fatigued. So this is what Dr. Gagan and her team will talk to us about. On Sunday, we'll have a symposium on sports and endocrinology, where we'll try to make endocrinology a happy subject, a happening subject involving physical activity, exercise and sports. So perhaps Essicon Bhuvneshwar is the right place for you to be in because we'll be able to help you overcome your challenges. Thank you very much, right. thank you. What's the best thing about practicing endocrinology in India? Um, I get a great deal of job satisfaction, I should say. Um, I, I've been in England for 14 years. All my training in endocrinology was in England. And I thought it was going to be a huge challenge um, managing patients in India. My, my first uh, impression was like, oh, are all patients like this, that they're going to be non-compliant, they're going to come with complications, but that is not true. Um, a significant proportion of my patients are quite compliant and it's a great job satisfaction to see that their diabetes control is much better. So again, Essicon is a wonderful place for you to be in because the best that India has to offer, the best that endocrinology has to offer is on display here. We have the Make in India programs where we'll be talking about the latest research from India epidemiological, diagnostic, and therapeutic. And I'm sure you'll enjoy being part of these symposia. So it's good to have you with us, and a warm welcome once again to all seniors, colleagues, and juniors. Enjoy your stay at Bhuvneshwar. Thank you.